Would you like to know why in mythology the hero tends to emerge at the darkest moment and why the hero saves the world right before they're about to essentially die? Then listen to this entire video where I explain how the hero goes through a process representing this death and rebirth cycle and in order to let go of the old, the 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 hero must almost die to all, sort of purge the ancient, the outdated mindset and to, to, transcend, to transcend from that. So before we get into this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to learn more about self-development, dating, Jungian psychology and how to reduce suffering in life. Let's get into it. So as I said, there's a recurring theme in mythology that the hero appears or is born or saves the world right before the world is on the verge of being annihilated by the monster, by the threat, or the, the, the in-group is on the verge of destruction. And we can see this, for example, in the Lord of the Rings, Frodo throws the, or let's say, defeats Sauron, confronts Sauron, right when Sauron's army has circled the, the remaining defense defensive forces of, of, of mankind and they're about to be destroyed and then Frodo just saves everybody. Or Batman and the Joker. The Joker sort of has, uh, has Gotham City's grip, you know, under, under his sort of hand, under his grip, in his grip and is about to destroy everything and then Batman just saves them. Or in Star Wars, there is like the, the dark force is about to you know destroy the earth and then the the, the heroes like, like luke skywalker defeats darth vader then or like say harry potter i mean i could just i could keep going you know saves uh saves or, or defeats voldemort right when he's at the you know about he's he has no energy left sort of and the thing is all of these not only is the, is the Joker, or sorry, is the, the, the monster at its strongest when the hero, like, you know, turns it around, or, no, no, not only is the, the humanity about to be annihilated, but also the hero is at the, the last of, of, of his, or her, her energy, she, they are essentially almost dead, and then something, something happens, so, the hero defeats the evil adversary with their last ounce of strength, and the victory occurs at a moment when all hope is lost. Then, mi miraculously, the hero finds access to some untouched power within and succeeds. But why? Like, why is this a prevalent theme? And I tried to Google it because it's, it's quite a, it's an important thing to know. And m my search was futile. I didn't find anything. But one more thing is also Jesus Christ is considered the hero of Christianity. The, the, the manifestation of a hero and he was born at the darkest point of the year which is you know close I think I think the darkest or the longest period of darkness is on the 22nd of, of December so the 25th his birthday is very close and there's a reason for that it's at the darkest moment of the year when the hero uh, emerges okay so we need to zoom out here to understand what's going on why I think I have an idea of why the the, the hero must almost die before he can save everybody. So, what, what, what's occurring is a death and a rebirth process at the individual level as well as the societal, the macro level. The prerequisite for growth in life is embracing novelty. You must learn something new, discover something new, and then integrate it into your personality. That's like growth. You know, when you grow, you feel like you're growing. You've learned something new. You're like a new person. It's an, you, 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 you are, it's a change. You used to be something, you're no longer that. Now you are something new, you are something better, you are something stronger. But with the, uh, this, is, this is the crux of it all. With the addition of new possessions, new wisdom, one must by default let go of the old possessions, the old wisdom, the old knowledge. So, that's difficult for humans because we have a bias to tend to gravitate towards the familiar ways of life, the familiar perspectives, the status quo. But that hijacks the potential for growth. So something strong, a powerful force must occur to help the human dispatch from the familiar, from the status quo. 
a psychological death is called for. It needs to burn off the dead wood. And I have an example for how to, how to illustrate this. Forests in nature, if I'm not mistaken, have a cycle of death and rebirth. The trees grow and the soil contains nutrients, rich nutrients that, that, that feed the trees and the, the, the wildlife. Now, the nutrients can become exhausted. They can become, well, used up, used up as in there's no nutrients left. And the trees, you know, they die and dead wood is, is scattered across the floor, basically dry dead wood. Now, a process to help reintegrate the nutrients of the trees back into the soil so the soil is rich again and then a new life can, can, can evolve or grow out of it. The fire, uh, sorry, the, the uh, wildfires can tend to occur where they burn the trees and the ashes are fertilizers then and are absorbed back into the soil and create a new, uh, a more, a richer soil. Now, humanity, of course, you know, some wildfires, as we see in Australia nowadays, seem, seem, you know, absurdly catastrophic. And one does not, I'm not, I'm not an expert in, you know, uh, how do you say, ecological biology or whatever, to know whether that's natural process or not. But, you know, humans can prevent wildfires from occurring because they just see the wildfire as, you know, it's, it's, it's killing the forest. But actually, it's a natural process, potentially, to reintegrate the nutrients of the forest back into the soil. Now, what I'm trying to say here is the same thing as with humans. This natural process occurs where a certain part of us needs to die in order to grow back stronger. But we can prevent that by holding on to the old trees, the old forest, because we think the death is a bad thing and it's going to kill us. It's going to, it's a, you know, you, well, the death is a, is a painful experience, but it is needed to, to transcend afterwards and grow twice as strong out of. So here, the hero must be pushed to the brink of destruction to purge the deadwood, to grow and transcend out of it. And now this happens at a psychological, individual, and also like a societal, a macro level. So a psychological death would be, let's say you have an ego and your ego can die. There's something called an ego death where you let go of your old identity in order to build a stronger, more accurate one that is aligned with your authentic self. At the individual level, let's say you had goals in life or also identities, which is similar to the psychological death perhaps, but you, you experience something that is, you know, a, a, a painful experience which let you know teaches you something that the old way of life was suboptimal and you learn how to integrate a better more powerful way of life and then at the societal level as I've made videos on how the culture becomes outdated because it used to fit the environment at that point in time but the environment is forever changing and then the government the culture the tradition whatever becomes outdated and then collapses so a death occurs and then a new structure needs to be reborn and which fits the environment at this new point in time, which fits the new demographics of the citizens, uh, for example. So this is why this death and rebirth process occurs in these hero narrators, because these heroes are saving the world. And in order for the old world to, to, to make room for the new world, it needs to be destroyed. It needs to it needs to collapse, and that is the death process where, you know, the, the darkness, the evil, the monster almost like purges that. It destroys it, and then the hero re-emerges, or emerges, and then defeats the, 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 the monster with the purged old system, and then rebuilds this new structure which is beneficial and protects the new civilization, or the, the civilization in general. That's what, why this death and rebirth process occurs within the hero, because the hero saves humanity. That's sort of the narrative, but the old needs to be purged first before you can make room for the, in order to make room for the, the new system, let's say. Yeah, so in conclusion, we frequently see this death and rebirth process in heroes because 
it's basically a process of growth. And in order to grow, you need to let go of what you used to know, the old version of you, and that needs to die. And that's a painful experience. And that's why the hero is often pushed to the brink of destruction. And then something within them re-sparks and they just, just prevent themselves from annihilation and then have this new room to transcend and become this greater version, this more powerful version of themselves. And that happens at every level, at a psychological, individual and societal macro level. So please leave a comment below whether you think there are any other reasons why the hero is almost on the verge of dying and why that, I mean, the thing is that the hero represents the human. It represents a human tendency, a biological, psychological tendency, and that's why we're so drawn to it because it's an abstraction of our own nature. It speaks to us because that's, it is part of who we are. And whether you think there are any other reasons why there is this death and rebirth process. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to learn more about self-development, dating, Jungian psychology, and how to reduce suffering in life. Thank you for listening.